Good. Uh, good morning, everyone. So uh, I, I would like to really today try and to try and finish off um, our discussion about the definition of the malacha, um, the malacha of gozes, such that we can get back to learning the sugya again and uh, learning it inside. Now we saw in the last couple of shiurim um, some discussion about what the malacha is in. Um, Tosfos um, seemed to take on the, the primary sugya that uh, triggered our, our question around this is the Gemara in Sadi Dalad, um, Sadi Dalad on the base, in which the Mishnah says that, uh, or the Mishnah, according to the Gemara's understanding, says that cutting nails is, uh, um, if one uses a kadi, if they aren't issues about the derech, the style of how one does it, cutting nails are. Um, uh, one is hired for cutting nails. And Tosas comments on this, that since in the case of cutting nails or having a haircut, one isn't interested in the shearings, one is merely interested in uh, removing the nails or the, uh, um, or the hair. This is a malacha shein tzvichel gufa. You're not doing the malacha for the purpose for which the malacha was designed, which is that of obtaining um, shearings. The analogy perhaps that Tosis would agree with to would be it's a bit like kota when you harvest something the purpose of um uh, harvesting wheat is not to clear the field of wheat but because you want the grain and similarly when you shear um the purpose is not to um get hold of the uh the shearings but the the, the, the is not to clear the skin but is to get hold of the shearings and therefore this would be a malacha i've done the malacha after all i cut the wool off but I didn't do it for the sake of the shearing and effort of the malacha shearing for the gufa. Um, now, Tosis' assumption seems to be that the way the malacha was done in the Mishkan was the shearing of uh, sheep in order to obtain wool, in order to make the tcheles thread that was used for the fabrics of the Mishkan. The Biyo Halacha brings the Rivash, and the Rivash says, no, they also did the malacha to uh, remove hair from skins, in order to get the skins that they used, the leather skins that they used for the Mishkan, such as the Tachash skin, and therefore this is also Malacha um, Shetzricha Legufa. And we saw the Biyar Halacha brought a proof for this, that the Malacha could also be in the effect it has on that which remains, as opposed to the effect on the body of hair that one gets hold of, um, with respect to the Hashivas of the Malacha and the shear that's required. Every malacha needs to have a minimum significance, a minimum chashivas. The shear, the measure of the malacha of gozes is at least two hairs. Says the Shulchan Aruch that if this is clearing one white hair from a head of black hair, this is also a chashivas because it leaves the rest of the hair freed of this white hair. But what you see, argues the Bialacha, is that the impact of the malacha and its significance, and therefore whether the requisite quantity and shear has happened, can be determined by that which is left behind, which means to say the malacha can be in the effect on that which is left behind, as opposed to the effect of that which is removed. This is a summary of what we uh, what we saw um, so far. Now, both the Rivosh and the Tosfos buy into the vision that how the malacha was done in the Mishkan is what determines the primary aim and definition of the malacha, Malacha Shatricha Nagufa. We already discussed on several occasions that there seems to be a universal discussion in, in Masechus Shabbos about to what degree the Malachas relate to human needs and to what degree they are merely mirror images of what happens in the Mishkan. Everyone agrees the 39 Malachas are determined by what happens in the Mishkan in terms of the, 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 the list of Malachas, but to what degree they remain defined by the manner in which they were done in the Mishkan um, is, is a machlokus that rears its head on many different occasions. And I'm not arguing that on every occasion it's dealt with in the same way, but one such example is around the issue of Malachas Tzrich Lagufa in Tzrich Lagufa. Tosis is of the view that what determines the aim of the Malacha, again, there's a machlokus Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Huda where the Malacha needs to be done where Tzrich Lagufa or even Yochayev where in Tzrich Lagufa. The view that you need a Malacha to be done Tzrich Lagufa, where it's needed for the body of the Malacha, Tosis learns that means where it needs to be done for the same purpose as it was done in the Mishkan. Um, 
Rashi argues, and Rashi says, as long as it's not done for a negative purpose, for that of removing a problem, as long as it's done for a positive purpose, that's called Tzrich Magufa, irrespective of whether it is done for the purpose in the Mishkan or not. Now you see from the language of the Rivosh that both Rivosh and Tosfos are interested in understanding what the purpose, it, for what purpose was it done in the Mishkan? Was it done in the Mishkan to obtain wool? In which case, if you're doing it to clear the hair, it would be in Tzrich Magufa, well, no, even in the Mishkan, it was done to clear hair as per the Rivosh, in which case it was done, um, in which case in the Mishkan, it's all even to be for when you're just doing it to clear hair. Um, there is an alternative approach, and I didn't put this in the source sheet, but this is the, the view of the Ramban. And the Ramban says that, that this is sort of misunderstanding the whole issue. We don't need to hunt, for example, in the Mishkan. The Malacha is um, simply Natila, simply the separation of the two. In other words, we ask, what is the outcome of the malacha? There's really three answers around that we can give. One answer would be obtaining the wool, in which case, if you're doing it merely to clear the skin, this would be a nasrikhlagufa. A second answer would be to clear the skin, or at least also to clear the skin. The outcome, the saw of the malacha, is that the skin is cleared. But a third possibility is that the outcome of the malacha is the separation between the two. As long as I, I have, a, in the language of the Rambam, as long as there's an atila, a taking, a separation, he says, the atila, the malach, the malach is the taking of it, the of the separation of it, um, separating the two, this is what the malacha is. The malacha isn't about obtaining one or the other, the malacha is about the, um, the, the, separation, of, uh, the separation of the true two, and this is enough for the malacha. Now, this means that we need to be careful about not... Uh, um, subconsciously slipping into thinking this is somehow analogous with um, koitza, with the malacha of harvesting. And I simply want to remind you of a discussion that we had on the uh, iron gimel on the base, um, around the malacha of koitza, where um, Tosus did Ramaskal with Sorich Le'itzim. Um, Tosus over there, um, uh, the, the, oh, just a brief reminder of the Gemara, the Gemara says if you're zome, you're pruning, and you break a branch off a tree, what malacha have I done in that situation? Um, well, if my intention is to improve the growth of the tree, then this is um, this is zoma. This is pruning the tree in order to encourage its growth, and therefore told on the tail of encouraging growth. However, if the malacha is because I want the wood, then this is the malacha of koitza. Says Tosfos, but you see from this that if you don't want the wood, this isn't the malacha of koitza. In uh, this is a legitimate discussion. When it comes to Zoma, at least according to the view of the Ramban, this is not a legitimate discussion. Because with respect to Zoma, we shouldn't think about the Malacha as being a harvesting type Malacha. It's not about harvesting the wool, in which the wool is analogous to the stalks of wheat, and the body of the animal is analogous to the earth. It's a different sort of Malacha. I mean, in fact, we find that the malacha even applies to a dead animal. In other words, this isn't about removing something from its source of growth, um, so it would appear to be the construct of um, the malacha. Now, with koitza, just a bit of chazara, is it true to say that with koitza, you're only chayev when you want to remove it from uh, its source? Um, well, that seems to be one reading of koitza. Koitza there seems to say it's not koitza if you don't want to remove it from the uh, source. Alternatively, and this is something we discussed, um, it may be that Tosis is only saying it there with removing a branch. Classic koitza is removing something growing out of something else. Um, a a, an apple growing on a tree is a fruit, the product of the tree. The wheat growing out of the earth is the fruit, the product of the earth. With a branch, I'm not removing the product of the tree, I'm removing part of the tree itself. And therefore what determines this is something which is harvestable may be my intention. So again, I, I'm, I'm simply saying that the, the the algorithm, the way of thinking around koitza isn't parallel to the way of thinking by gozit. It is true by shearing, it needs to be something separate from the body. And we saw the machlokas in the first shear that we gave in the sugya, where the separate from the body means physiologically, biologically, hair, nails, um, wool, or does it mean surplus to requirements and therefore would even include a wart, which is part of the body, but nonetheless something which is designed or, or, or omade stands, is set aside, to be removed from the body itself. 
So in that sense, both coats and Anzoma are removing something, um, and Gozes are removing something separate from the body, but the nature of the Malacha sounds like it's something uh, um, very different. In the case of uh, Gozes, it may be the separation and the productivity brought about by the separation that matters, as opposed to the, um, uh, as, as opposed to the, um, particularly about clearing the skin or preparing clearing the wool. And the whole idea that we sort of need to think about the Malach as one or the other um, may not be uh, correct. Now, um, someone posted in the, uh, in the group, is this analogous to the separation of Bore? Um, because Bore is also a Malach about separation. Bore is uh, sorting things out. Um, I would take that comparison with a great deal of caution and uh, warn about taking that comparison too far. Um, being careful about seeing it as similar to Bora. First of all, with Bora, with the separation of Bora, the truth is we can ask the same question itself. Bora is, don't forget, part of Sidura de Pas, part of food production. And therefore, the outcome, the significant outcome of Bora may be that I have clarified food. I don't have food which is a mixture, but I now have the food that I want. I removed from the food that I want anything which is um, surplus to my requirements at this particular point in time, but anything that I want separated off. Um, over here, the separation isn't that of a mixture. The wool and, let's say, the body of the animal are not mixed, but nonetheless, they are, they are bound together in a certain sort of way, and it's the separation of the binding, the detaching of the binding, which is the important part of the malacha. There are other malachas to do with detaching. You have korea, which is turning, tearing, and you have mati, which is undoing a knot. All these analogies uh, need to be taken with a pinch of salt. Each type of connection has its own unique uh, aspects to it and its own way of applying it. Clearly, the connection between a piece of fabric ripped, it's sewn together and now ripped apart, or the piece of, fab of uh, rope knotted together and unknotted, each case it is its own um, malacha. Nonetheless, with, uh, um, with goizes, the suggestion is that uh, hair and uh, things which grow out of animals or living beings, separating them is its own uh, achievement of malacha, and therefore this would be the malacha of uh, of um, of of, uh, of the Gozes. Um, so so would appear to be the uh, the outline of the uh, of the sugya. Um, I'll just pause there in case there's any any comments about this. Otherwise, we'll uh, we'll we'll move on. Yeah, can I ask a question about the separation? So yes. I understand why you're kind of like mathematically saying that the separation is, you know, that that would be the the totsa that would make a lot of sense. But when you when you think about it, that's not really the totsa that I'm interested in, right? In the same way that for borer, I'm interested in creating a product that I'd want to eat, or for kotsa, I want to pick out something that I, I want to then use in the manufacturing process. With gozes, specifically, I, I am interested in getting that wool. I'm not particularly interested in the fact that it's detached from the sheep per se. Okay, so this is a very important question, and there's a part of the question I can answer and part of the question I can't. The part I can answer is that, factually speaking, what you said isn't so clear-cut and isn't so obvious at all. Meaning to say that, that the human relationship to animals is such that separation between the two is useful for us humans. And that, that, the argument is that that's the significance of the malacha, that we humans treat animals as um, industrial products. And for our purposes, having the growth of the animal separate from the animal itself is a, is a useful outcome. Why is it useful? Well, sometimes because I want the wool and sometimes I, because I want the wool positively and sometimes because I want the animal without the wool. So e each case would be separate. Um, there's a chiddush in the Gemara in Sadi Dalit that this malacha even applies to humans. We don't treat ourselves as objects. We treat ourselves as a subject. It's me, I'm a person. My chashivas is not um, as an object. Nonetheless, we, we do relate to ourselves as objects. And for reasons of aesthetics or functionality, we sometimes want to separate things off ourselves, like taking haircuts or cutting our nails. And therefore, in that respect, we can be the object of our own creative activity. And therefore, if I cut my nails or someone else's nails, this could be a malacha. The, the real interesting longness of the mission in Saudi Dalad is about human relationships to humans an extension of the malacha even to that, or even to ourselves, and whether we can be both the object and the subject in our, inter in our interaction with ourselves. We can be the subject who, as a human, is doing the malacha on Shabbos, 
interacting with ourselves in cutting our own uh, our own nails or, or um, our own hair. So, but taking that leap and going beyond it and saying, yes, we can do these malachas to ourselves, our motive in doing the malach is simply because we sometimes wish to separate a body from the growth of the body. And this is the chashivas of the malacha, irrespective of um, whether I particularly do it because of the need to rid the animal of the, because I want the animal or the human without the nail or the hair, or because I want the wool, um, the wool itself. Now, the second part of your question is, where do we get that distinction from? How do we know when we look at malachas whether to define Gozu as one way or another? Now, I'm reverse engineering it, because I'm simply saying that from the Sudya and from the Rishonim, you see this is how they're conceptualizing it. So we're building up based upon the data we have. I don't really know, top down, why Chazal understood, what, what gave them the confidence to understand this malacha rather than that way rather than the other way. Is it that they knew how the malacha was done in the Mishkan and like Rumi Vash argues, it was done not just to get wool, but also to strip leather of um, skin, of, of hair? Um, or is it somehow they understood that uh, this is the nature of how I interact with animals as opposed to with farming land where my intentions get the grain? I, I have no idea what the answer to that question is. So if your question is, how do I know this distinction? Um, where does it draw its origin from? I don't really know the answer. How do we know it? Because this is what we're trying to do when we're struggling to make sense of the, of, uh, of the sugya. So that's a, a half answer to your question. But conceptually, I can say with confidence, the premise of your question is not correct. Who says that the malachah is just about getting the wool? That we can think of all sorts of scenarios where the malachah is trying to beautify the, 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 the body that remains cleans, cleansed of the wool or cleansed of the long nails or hair. And indeed, this is how we humans take haircuts and cut our nails. So it could be Chazal saw this as, as significant an achievement in the real world and therefore they understood it was reasonable that the malachah wasn't defined by one or the other because both are important human achievements and therefore they, they didn't think it was significant. Whereas... Um, um, when it comes to kaita, they saw the main human achievement as removing the product. It's part of producing fruit and vegetables. And if you want to know where weeding comes from, and you also strip land of growth, well, that would maybe fall under choresh, which is about miyape ara, it's about beautifying land, improving the quality of land. So maybe that Hazal understood that when it comes to land, these are two different malachas. Kaita is about harvesting, it's about obtaining the product. Improving the land is about choresh, whereas when it came to animal life, on the contrary, both sorts are equally choshev in human functionality and therefore they didn't see a reason to define the malacha more narrowly as one or the other this is guesswork this is speculation about what led chazal to understand that malacha that way i'm simply arguing that the evidence indicates that there's different schools of thought in the shonen the rivosh and toysas think it's important to refer back to the to the mishkan this is a general pattern of the view of toysas i'm not enough of an expert on the rivosh's view but toysas consistently throughout malacha shabbos views in Tzor of the Gutha as looking back at the Mishkan more, and the Ramban consistently views Menachah Shabbos about thinking more about human need, and never doesn't see a need to take sides in this, he says the Menachah is simply the separation of both. Who cares uh, what my primary intention is in doing it? Can I just ask? Yes. Um, you said uh, to be treat with care the um, comparisons to other Menachahs, but yes. it's just in the mission, our mission doesn't actually say Goza, it, you know, the mission doesn't say what the Menachah is. Um, how do we know it's talking about gozes? Um, the, the mission says that gozes are satsema. No, 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 I'm talking about this mission, I know tell Tsiponov. Oh, sorry, okay, fair point, sorry, excellent point. Um, I, I will come on to that in a moment when we see the Ritva. For now, I'm assuming, like Rashi, that says that no tell Tsiponov is a, is a told of gozes, it's an aspect of gozes. And this is how the Rambam learns also. Sorry, apologies. Yes, the mission study data doesn't specify. But I'm going with those who showed him that assume this is a, this is a subset of uh, of uh, of Gozage. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the um, this this is the sugya and uh, the malacha. What I want to do now is um, spend a few moments quickly looking at the run, uh, which I printed, which I, I sent via the WhatsApp group. I, I only discovered this run late last night um, when I was looking at the mission in in Sadi Dalit again and, and trying to go through the Rishonim. And I think it's, uh, it's an interesting one and, and relevant to the sugya. Um, I put in brackets, are chidush eran ham yuchosos. Yuchosos means miyuchos, like a yichos. They are um, uh, assigned to the run this comment. However, there's quite a lot of doubt about whether this is really the run or the ritva. Um, there, there's a little bit of a mess in Masechus Shabbos about the, how we ascribe it different Rishonim. The general consensus is that the Rishon that was known through the generations as the ritva 
um, is not the Ritva, um, and the Rishon known throughout the generations of the Ram is not the Ram. Nonetheless, these certainly came from people around that era in Spain, and of the generation of the Rishonim, and uh, you can see from their mastery of Shas that these were, um, these were important voices. Quite possibly the uh, Rishon ascribed to the Ritva is the, uh, was a Talmud of the Ritva, who wrote in the name of his Rebbe, because there's similarities to the views of the Ritva, but stylistic differences and so on indicate this isn't the Ritva itself, and the same with these uh, Kadushay and Aram. Um, in recent years, there's a new manuscript that's been discovered that is generally considered to be the real Ritva. But I, I, I'm, I just, just that as an aside, why I wrote the word Minchosos in uh, brackets, that's the, uh, the terminology used for a Rishon that's ascribed, a text that's ascribed to a Rishon, but there's some doubts whether it really was the Rishon. Um, interestingly, after I sent these sources, I saw that the um, almost word for word, what I wrote here in the name of the Ram, is also found in the Miochus the Ritva, um, in, sorry, in, in what's called the Ritva HaChadosh, in the, um, in the text which is ascribed, the, the newly discovered text which is ascribed to the Ritva also. This is uh, just a little bit of background on, on Masechus uh, Shabbos. Now the Ritva records Max's point, and basically the structure of the Ritva is that Rashi, the, the, let's get this clear, the Mishnah says that if you take, um, if you cut nails with um, a hand, it's a machlokus, it's a chayev. The Gemara says everyone agrees if you cut nails with a utensil, you are chayev. But which malacha is it? So Rashi really is the one that got us into the sugya, because Rashi says it's gozes. Other Rishonim argue, and they say it's oke dava migadolo. It's detaching something from its point of growth. Oke dava migadolo would be a tolda of kotzeh. And therefore, this is the malacha of kotzeh, of harvesting, rather than uh, the malacha of gozes. But Rashi says gozes. So this is where the ritva comes from and the run comes from. Let's have a quick read of this inside. Um, I put it on the WhatsApp group last night, to those who don't have the text in front of them. Machloek is biyad, of a bakli divar kol chayv. Perish Rashi, mishum gozes. This is the malacha is gozes. She'afal bi she'ena sarech legiza even though you don't need the shearing, and also you don't want the nails, no one's going to do anything with the nails. Since your intention is to beautify yourself, with this uh, shearing, similar to shearing hair off a uh, leather, even where you don't need that which you're harvesting, where you want the skin to be left without hair, because they share royal ibud in order that you can tan it. So this is the Ritva quoting and explaining uh, Rashi. Now, then the Ritva carries on and he says, Some say it's Okadov and Megadolo, Velo Machov, he says this is incorrect. So he told of the Koitza, this is the told of Koitza. The in Katira Ella be Gadoli Kaka, and Katira only applies to Gadoli Kaka, things going out of the ground, not things that don't grow out of the ground. Now, uh, this is not a knockout blow because it's possible that a tolder is different to the Av, as Rabbi Ram and Araman points out. Coat says only things that grow from the ground, maybe Okud Dovim and Gadoli uprooting things is even things that don't grow from the ground. And uh, so he carries on. But then he says, The Oid, Shein Chai Misham Koitza, Ella Kashu Sarif the Eitzim. You're only Chai for Koitza where you need the Eitzim. Masha'in came bizarre, as opposed to over here, where you don't need eight So this is a reference back to Tosis' comment on Ein Gimel on the base, where the Gemara said, it's really a diuk in the Gemara. Zoom ever talks eight If you bake a branch off a tree, and you need that branch because you want to use it for firewood or making furniture, then that would be koitza. However, if you bake a branch of the tree because you don't need the branch, you just want to remove it from the tree, to strip the tree of it, then that would be pruning, not uh, koitza. So this is what the ritual says. Now, whether he means the problem is because it's ain't sark the gufa, whether he means that the very definition of kotzer is harvesting the object, um, is the same as the discussion we had really in Tosis over there. Is it that he agrees it's the malacha, but he says it's ain't sark the gufa, you're not doing it for the purpose of the malacha that you need, and it will get caught up in arguments about sark the gufa or not, or whether he says the very definition of the malacha is taking something you need remains a little unclear in the ritual, but um, I'll call upon him as ritual neatly to summarizes our point of discussion and draws our attention to two points. First of all, uh, Max's point that the Mishnah doesn't say gozes, it's Russia's interpretation. You could understand it differently. And the Ritva who, who explains the difference between Kota, which is Okudov and Mikudolo, as opposed to gozes, where this isn't a concern. He doesn't, he's not worried by gozes about the fact whether you need it or not. Now, I just want to use the last two minutes available to us to make one more point, which also aligns to a halacha lamaisa point, a very important, very, very important halachic point. Um, and the background is as follows. Um, even if 
you are chayev for cutting nails as goizes, because it doesn't matter that you don't need the nails, you still need a positive intention as opposed to a negative intention. Otherwise, you get caught up in arguments about Tzmich al or not. So Rashi, for example, speaking about carrying hotel, understands that the reason why carrying uh, uh, something dirty out of your house to put it in the street is a malacha she'ein tzmich al is because it's not that you want the object outside, it's that you don't want the object inside. Everyone would agree that Seder, catching a uh, dangerous animal to keep it out of the way, is ein tzmich al So everyone would agree that you need a positive intention, not a negative intention. And this is where, again, it gets a little bit um, confusing and needs careful thought. Because you could argue that cutting nails is removing a problem. My nails are getting in the way, they're ugly. I'm removing a problem by cutting them off, in which case it would be ein tzmich al The Rashi and the Ritz are saying not like that. They say my purpose in removing the nails is leyachos, to beautify the person who's left behind. A haircut is not removing a problem. Long hair or long nails, even um, uh, hair on an animal, is not removing a problem. This is how the nature is. It doesn't happen to be that there's hair or nails that grow out of human beings. This is the nature of what a human body or an animal body produces. However, if I wish to beautify the skin in order to tan it, or I wish to beautify myself, I need the haircut or the nail clipping. And therefore, this is a positive malacha, not a negative malacha, because I'm trying to get the beautification of the skin. I'm trying to achieve something positive, which is a, a freshly haircutted or nailed look, as opposed to, or, or skin with um, hair removed in order to be able to tan it, as opposed to um, one with nails or hair on. So again, it needs careful thought to determine, is this removing a problem? In which case, everyone would agree this is going to be to look for, or is this achieving something positive, which is the office. Now, the post can give one example where everyone would agree this is um, removing a problem, and this has very significant effect on the Maisa, which is the situation of someone who needs to tovel go to the mikvah on Shabbos. Nowadays, uh, where we, we don't generally concern ourselves with Tumah and Tara, this is primarily of importance to a woman who is Nidah and who needs to go to the mikvah on a Friday night, and she becomes aware that she hasn't cut her nails. And I'm not going to go into the shayla of cutting nails and whether there's room to allow longer nails or not, but in a situation where um, nails need to be cut in order to avoid a chatzitsa, uh, an inappropriate barrier to immersion on uh, in Hilchus uh, Tvilas Mikra, there's a lot of discussion about whether one can do amir al akum to allow this. Now, the general rule is that amir al akum is not just legitimately allowed, unless there's a, a real need, like Tzorich Mitzvah, and even then, often or generally, if not in the case of a Melacha Deraisa. Now, is cutting nails a Melacha Deraisa or not? Well, the Mishnah in Tzadi Dalad says cutting nails is. Whatever you learn the Melacha to be, but the Mishnah says Chayev. If you cut it with a Kli in a manner that's not Shinoi, not the Yad, you're Chayev. Nonetheless, the post can say, in this case, everyone would agree that it's a Melacha Shein Tzvich Lagufa. Because if one's cutting nails in order to beautify oneself, that's a positive outcome. But here one is cutting nails to remove a problem because there would be a chatzitza, a barrier to immersion, to tevila, and they wouldn't allow the tevila to go ahead. So here, everyone would agree this is removal of a problem, and therefore this is a malacha she'ein I'm not talking the malacha because I want to harvest the nails. It's not disease in that respect. I'm not doing the malacha because I want to beautify the body left behind. I'm doing the malacha to remove the barrier to immersion, and therefore this would be a malacha she'ein tzvich lagufa. Therefore, it would only be a drabonon, and therefore Amir al-Akum instructing a non-Jew to do it would be a solution. And this is indeed how we paskan halacha lamaisa, that in a case where the length of the nails is a chatzitza, I'm not saying it always is, certain cases where it turns out to be a chatzitza, a malacha she'ein tzvich lagufa, this would be an appropriate uh, solution. So uh, I'll stop there for uh, today. This draws us to the end of um, the broader discussion I wanted to have about uh, um, about Malacha uh, about um, the definition of Gozes. Um, we've discussed several aspects of what Gozes is, um, primarily whether Gozes is a Malacha in the skin left behind, whether Gozes is a Malacha in the object which is being uh, it, it's sheared and harvested, or whether either of these is, neither of these is correct. It's about the separation of the two. That was the second discussion I had. The first discussion we had about the essence of the malacha is, gozes means removing something surplus and extra to the body. Does that mean biologically, like hair and nails and wool? Or does it mean in terms of functionality and therefore even the oral and the bismillah? 
for uh, a Yavelis, a wart. Um, and Imitz Hashem in the next year, um, I'll please Marim Konus ask to actually learn the Sugya inside. I'm sorry that we ended up doing a, a lengthier introduction to the Sugya than perhaps normal, but it's important to understand what the Malacha is. Um, I'll pause here if there's any questions that people want to ask and share. Otherwise, uh, we'll call it a day for today. Rabbi, Could I ask a question, Rabbi? Yes, please, Adam, yeah. Yeah, uh, my, my question was why we haven't, in the Gemara in Sadi Dalad, there's a machlokas regarding Kli La'acher. In that some people say Kli Yachayev La'acher, and some uh, think Rabbanon said your Potter. So are we going to discuss later why your specific high of the Kli? Is it just because that Semer is done with the Kli? And essentially, why then would you be Potter La'acher? Okay, so so I'm I'm uh, I'm not. We are going to speak about that a little bit because it's really going to get us into the discussion, which is at the heart of our sugya, which is um, what is the um, what what is the derech gaziza? Because the issue over there is it's not derech gaziza, and our sugya considers the question about whether doing gaziza um, weaving and sorry, I'm not weaving, uh, spinning on the back of the animal. Is derech uh, to be on derech or not? So we will touch upon. I'm not going to go into enormous detail, but we will we will address it a little bit.